your mind. Renewing your mind. Last week, we talked about walking in double-mindedness. Walking in double-mindedness. Last week, uh, we talked about that. That a lot of us are unstable in our own ways because we have one foot with the world and one foot with God. A person that walks double-minded, we talked about last week, that's unstable in all their ways. So this is another uh, future thing that we're talking about with dealing with the mind. The mind is everything. You can control your actions, your behavior, your conduct, whatever you want when you have a made-up mind. There is power in a made-up mind. There is power in a, in a mind that's already determined to succeed at whatever cost. I feel like I'm alone here. Can I get an amen with that? Uh, all right, all right. Just checking, just checking. So I want to lead you to what does it require to live with a renewed mind? Because a lot of times our own actions, our own decisions, our own will to do what we want to do sometimes is not enough. Sometimes it's not good. We're not powerful enough. The flesh is too weak. The flesh is too corrupted. The flesh is too nasty. And we cannot make decisions based on that if our mind is not made up. If our mind is not renewed. So God wants us to have a renewed mind. And what does renew mean? Renew says to make new or as if it's new again. In other words, restored. It's a mind that's surrendered to Christ. The right behavior, a lot of us talk about right behavior. Well, you know, I didn't do this. Well, you know, I didn't cheat on my husband. I didn't cheat on my wife. Uh, I, the right behavior is not necessarily a made-up mind. Because you know what God wants above your right behavior? Because let's just face it, we all have missed the boat at some point. Let's just face it. I don't care if you're a preacher. I don't care if you're just sitting there. I don't care who you are. We all missed the mark according to Romans 3.23. So the mark that God really wants in a Christian life is not just salvation. They want transformation. When you're transformed, the only way it's going to be transformed is by the renewing of your mind. If your mind is not renewed, if you're just going on pure willpower, you ain't going to get a renewed mind. You're not going to accomplish what you had to accomplish. You're not going to go, you know, dating, uh, uh, like in this world that everything invites, you know, sex and lust and all that. And I couldn't have married her like that because I wanted to honor God. But the old self, and there's people that still judge me based on the old self, the old self would have never lasted that long would have never gone four years without being intimate with a woman it would have never done that but there's power in a made-up mind if it's renewed in christ but if it's not renewed you can't make it on your own you can't make nothing so the bible verse that i got for you is romans 12 1 as you're going there because the best life you can possibly live my friend is a life that your creator has designed for you. That's the best life, period. It's not what you're going to make out of it, whatever's going to turn out to be is going to turn out to be. That's going to be the kesara, sara life. But the best life that you can possibly have is the one that God has already designed for you. And he's already given you everything. Can we say everything? Everything. Everything that you need to have that abundant life, to have that life that you're just not existing, going through the motions, you know, or worrying about. I, I, I really, honest to God, to me, a Friday is just like a Monday. Because to me, every day is a joyful day. You, I, I never say, thank God it's Friday. Hey, no, nothing against, none of that. But I'm just saying, for me personally, every day is a Friday. Every day I wake up with the new transformed Eddie, not the way that, and I'm still, I'm still going at it. I'm still, I'm, I'm not, I haven't reached the final destination. I never will. So don't judge me. Well, you could judge me, but you know, don't judge me unrighteously. You know what I mean? Because there's a good way to judge and a right way to judge, but don't, don't, don't judge me unrighteously because I haven't arrived. Just like God is going to be there with taking me in and then he's going to say, okay, now let's go in. Now you'll be perfected. But in the meantime, just continue striving, renewing the mind so that the mind can be like the mind of Christ. When you have the mind of Christ, you can do powerful things. In Romans 12, 1, I read, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, 
by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Can we say a living sacrifice? In other words, it's not easy. Is it easy, me, being divorced, former womanizer in my 20s? Is it easy for me to, eh, no woman anymore? <clears throat> Excuse me, no woman anymore? No, it's not easy. But when you have a renewed mind, all things are possible. Because what's impossible for God is possible for, what, what's impossible for man is possible for God. But we have to have our mind. See, we feel like if it's too difficult, well, it's not meant to be. Let me go the highway. Let me go the easy way. Every day of your life, every single day of your life, there's a conflict between the easy way and the right way. Every single day of your life. You're going to have to wake up every single day of your life and say, well, the easy thing to do is this. The right thing to do is that. And every time you're going with the right thing to do, there's going to be opposition coming yes. against you. Yes. But God is going to equip you with what you need to have in you Amen. to fight this battle. It is a fight. Amen. Well, what do you mean? You know, well, you know, a lot of preachers don't talk about that, that we have to fight. Well, then why does the word say, fight the good fight of faith? We're more than conquerors. Put on the armor of God. Amen. It's a fight. Amen. It's a fight. You got to resist. Amen. And it's not fun to resist. It's easier to give up and do the right thing. But when it says here, if you want to renew your mind, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not conform to this world, but be transformed. That's what God wants, transformation. By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect Will of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's vitally important that we have this mindset that the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God is the best for your life. What you think is the best in your limited mind is not the best. The best is a life in Christ surrendered, living sacrificially for him. Live resisting. But people don't want to do that. And so they say, oh, so you want me to sacrifice. Oh, so you want me to resist. I don't say that. I didn't wrote the word. God says to do it. Because see, what happens is when you do that, when you resist a little bit and wait, when you resist, when you put a little fight into your, into your life, then what happens? God somehow, some way blesses you, equips you, matures you develops you you become this soldier that one day down the road you're like wow how did i get here you got here slowly but surely but what happens is we have a lot of christians that are picky christians how many are, are picky eaters i know you are how many are picky eaters my question to you is are you allowing your mind to be renewed are you Really, I'm asking this question as I open this can of mixed vegetables. You'll never, you'll never, when you go to, if you ever buy this ever, you'll never forget what I'm about to do right now. This is a can of mixed vegetables. Now, en Goya, porque si es Goya, tiene que ser bueno. So, Are you still conforming to this world's way of thinking or are you in the position to renew your mind? You see what happens with picky Christians? You like lima beans? You like lima beans? I know you don't. What happens to picky Christians is they get the word of God and they say, I'm going to eat this. I'm going to be a giver. I can give them to the ministry. But don't tell me to have no sex before marriage. I'm going to respect my wife. I mean, love my wife, but don't tell me to respect my husband. I'm going to uh, be faithful to my spouse. But you know what, man? This thing about 55 years married with just one woman, with just one man. You know, I need a little variety. You know, you know, uh, you know I, I got to get drunk on 
weekends. Weekends are for partying. You know, I, I got to get some booze. I got to get some weed. I got to get high. You know, so you know what? That little part from like I used to do for many years. I was raised by Christian parents. I'm like, okay, I believe in 90% of the Bible, but that 10% about no sex before marriage? No, 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 God. Why did you put that there? <laughs> but it wasn't until I surrendered. It wasn't until I failed in my marriage and it wasn't until the Holy Spirit revealed to me, you're doing things as a picky Christian. You're living life your way. You're not surrendered. You're not all in. Jesus is your Savior. You might make it to heaven, but he ain't your Lord here on earth. So you know what? He, Jesus is not really your King of Kings. He's not really the Prince of Peace in your life. He's just somebody that you have the ticket to heaven, but you're not going to have heaven on earth. And so because you're, you're not resisting, because you're not surrendering, because you're not suffering, because you're not sacrificing yourself a little bit, you know what happens? You become wishy-washy, and then you become a picky Christian. That all you do is, well, you know what? Carrots are okay. You know what? Potatoes are okay. Oh, no. <laughs> that, that pea has got to go over here. Oh, you know what? Green beans are okay. You know what? Corn is okay. Giving to the kingdom of God, yeah, it's good. Oh, you know what? Um, don't cuss. Oh, okay, I can do that. Don't lie. I, I can do that. Love your neighbor as yourself. I can do that. Love your enemy. Um, give 10% to the church. I can do that. Um, I'm looking for a lima bean. I can't find one. <laughs> <laughs> Love your wife even though she's unlovable. <sighs> she, deserves, she, she deserves a little meanness. Pride has kicked in. Well, you know, I, I got all this together, but my pride, you know, you know what? She deserves a little treatment, a little bad treatment. You know, um, um, uh, I, I like this club scene. Let me go to clubs on weekends. Uh, nobody's going to notice. I'm just going to smoke a little weed on the side, get drunk on Saturday. Sunday I'll be back in church. Everything's wonderful. Uh, I, I can't do that. I got to live my life. I got to please myself. I got to please myself. Nothing, no, nothing sacrificially. No, no suffering. It's all about... Picky Christians, just like picky eaters, when you are picky, you're not getting the full nutrients of the vegetables. When you're being picky, when you're being picky in the word of God, you're not getting the full benefits. Can we say the word full? Full, full benefits, full blessings. Full favor. Amen. Does God love you? Of course he does. That's not the point. You're not getting the full benefits. My wife, if I were to die, on the will, because she's my wife, she gets the benefits of the will because she's my wife. She's my lover. She's my partner, my soulmate. She's my, uh, my, my lover. She's all of that. And so... What happens is, what happens is, I want to eat the whole word of God. What happens is, she gets the benefits because she has married me. If she is shacking with me, staying in the same bed with me, but not married. If she's sleeping with me, but, you know, we don't have no commitment of long-term stuff. She does not get those benefits because only the wife or the spouse gets that benefit. The same with the word of God. If you're going to be a picky Christian, you're not going to get the full benefits of his word. Can we get an amen? amen. And, by, and these questions that I threw at you. Uh, about are you still conforming to the world? Are you renewing your mind? You know, don't get me wrong. They're, they're not to condemn you condemning is the wrong form of judgment let's get judgment you know that when people say you know, you're judging we all judge in fact christians are 
called to judge. I'll prove it to you in a Bible verse. I got to do a Bible study about this because some of you talk to me like, oh, yeah, that's judging. We could judge righteously. We cannot condemn is the wrong form of judgment. What's the difference, Pastor Eddie? Condemning is you're doing this, you're going to hell. That ain't my job. That's God's job. He is the judge. He's going to say heaven or hell. Uh, you don't want to be in God's hands later on when you've done all you've had to do. And then later on, you're on judgment day. I hope his grace and his mercy is sufficient. But what if it's not? Because he's going to say to many, he's going to say to many, I never knew you. And so pastors like to preach these messages that tickle your ears and you go in and you're like, oh, I feel wonderful. But then there's no transformation out that door. You're still the same. There's no change. And so the wrong form of judgment, a judgment is when you say you're going to hell. You don't do that. The right form of judgment is, hey, listen, what you're doing is inappropriate. It's not going to get you the good benefits, that you, the, 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 the full benefits uh, of, of the thing. And so, you know what? No te conviene. You can do that. But then you hear people like, don't judge me. Basically, people that say, don't judge me, are people that just simply don't want to live holy. That's all it is. Because look what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.15. Don't go to it. I'm just going to read it out loud. But he that is spiritual, say spiritual. spiritual. Not, in other words, not a natural man that doesn't know the word of God. He that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged to no man. You see, a, a lot of us, we don't want to, we may hear the, he, and here you're going to hear the truth. You may not live the truth out there, but here you're going to hear the truth. Yeah, it's not going to be like some of these other uh, pastors or whatever. I don't sugarcoat things. But you see, that's what a friend is. If I'm going to tell you that there's danger down the road, I'm going to tell you now. Not later on. Oh, by the way, I, sh I should have told you back then, but, you know, uh, I didn't want to offend you. That's what, that, to me, that's not love. To me, that's cover up. And so here you're going to hear the word. Whether you live the word out there or not, but here at least you're going to hear the word. But here's what it says. We judge. And it's neither judgmental nor self-righteous if we agree with what the word says. If we agree with this, the Bible said, let uh, God be true and every man be a lie. Either we take this or we don't. Letting, letting a person know about where they're at. Letting them know, hey, this is, hey, hey, listen, you shouldn't go there. Hey, listen, letting a person know where they're at, it's not judging. It's called informing. Hallelujah. I'm not saying that person is going to hell. It's informing. So I want to get that out of the way because we have this thing here that people are doing this, this thing over and over again. But understand this. You got to understand this, and I'll go on with the topic about renewing the mind. Understand that the Bible says that unless Something is exposed. Can we say the word exposed? Exposed, expose, not covered up. Exposed. Unless something is exposed, there is no change. When I was in sin at 41 years old, I had just gotten divorced. I remember somebody goes up to me and goes, Eddie, you're never going to have the full benefits and blessings of God. And what God has called you to do as a pastor one day, if you continue living like you're doing. But you had other people that were like, you know, hey, you know, you're, you're all right. You're all right. Yeah, but I thank God for that man that had the boldness, that had the love of God to tell me that, and that caused me to go and analyze myself and say, wait a second. He's got a point here. And that's when I said, you know what? I'm all in. And that's when I started my, my life for changing. How do you do this, Eddie? How do you, how, how do you ask God to renew my mind? My mind that has been like this for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 40, 10 years, 20, whatever it is. In Psalms 143.10, it says, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of righteous. The word of God, my friend, is the mind of God. Thus, it's prudent that you acquire more wisdom. Wisdom from here. Not wisdom from people's opinions or what the world thinks or what President Obama thinks. Or what, uh, opinions, we all have them. But the word of God is the truth. And we have to abide by that. And so another example that I want to give you was 
in your job. If your boss gives you an assignment, if your boss gives you an assignment, I'm going to say something. If your boss gives you an assignment and your coworker is trying to talk you out of it, you want to keep your job, right? Uh-huh. You want to keep the benefits of your job, right? Okay, then you're going to do what the, job, what the boss says. Because if you do what the coworker says, you know what's going to happen? You're going to get fired. And you're not going to get the benefits. So if your boss, your creator, says do this, and you don't do it, you might not get fired because his grace and his mercy is sufficient. His grace and his mercy might cover you, but you will pay some consequences down the road. Amen? So you have to somehow, some way, understand that obedience is the key. God gives you everything already. He gives you everything already. But all you got to do is obey. It's not that challenging when you have a made-up mind. And I have five ways here to keep a spiritual mind fresh and to get it transformed. How to keep a mind fresh and to keep it transformed. Number one, establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. Establish a relationship with Jesus Christ. In other words, salvation via confession. In 1 Timothy 2 there, it says, This is good and pleases God our Savior, for he wants everyone, can we say everyone? Everyone. To be saved and to understand the truth. God is a lover of your soul. He doesn't want nobody to perish. He wrote the commandments for and the word of God for a reason. And you hear people say, well, man wrote this. Yes. 44 to be exact, 1,500 or so years ago or or mega years ago. But the thing about it is this. Word was written by man inspired by the Holy Spirit. What's the Holy Spirit? It's one-third of God. So it's actually God like grabbing your pen and and holding your hand and writing it for you. Because a lot of books did not enter it here. A lot of books way, went on the wayside. But these did for whatever reason. They've tried to burn this book. They tried to, to, to get away from this book. Uh, back in England, and, and uh, what was his name? Uh, Luther uh, saved a bunch of uh, Bibles. But they were trying to wipe this out from the face of the earth. But the Bible says it will be here forever and ever and ever and ever. The number one bestseller. The one that transforms you. But here's the thing. Reading the Bible ain't going to do nothing. Well, you know, you hear, you hear pastors, you know. See, I go a little deeper sometimes. You know, I, I do a little root canal. I, I don't just say, I, I don't just say, uh, uh, you got to read the word. Everybody says that. Everybody is common. You know, oh, well, brother, you know, you got to read the word. Everybody says that. But it's not about reading the word. It's about doing the word. It's about living the word. It's about receiving the word. It's about making up your mind that you're going to do this. And when you do this, there's going to be bumps and bruises. You're going to fall down. You're going to have slips. And sometimes you're going to act like somebody that is an atheist. In fact, let me go a little further. Some of the most wicked people I've ever seen on the face of the earth are Christians that have a lot of Bible knowledge. Hear me out. They have a lot of Bible knowledge. But they don't have Bible in their heart. It's in their head, but it's not in their heart. Some of the most wicked ones I've seen, they have a lot of Bible. They can quote the Bible left and right, but they're wicked. Because the Bible knowledge is in their head, but it's not in their heart. God says, let this be in your heart. And so a lot of times you see these people that look just like, you know, wow, this guy knows the word. He should be like King Jesus Jr. But the thing about it is he has the knowledge but not in your heart. And then you have an atheist that can act just okay. He doesn't have no word knowledge. He has no nothing in his heart. But he just knows how to live a little moral. And we're comparing, okay, well, wait a second. Which one is the right one here? Should I be an atheist? Because this guy looks like he's got it together. This guy's a little jacked up over here. Uh, but this guy used to be a former drug addict, used to be a uh, whatever, you know, a dealer. And all of a sudden now he's changed and transformed. 
Uh, but both of them sometimes, you can't tell the difference who's a Christian. Some of the most wickedest people I've ever seen. Because it's the person that has the word of God in their hearts. Can we say hearts? hearts. That changes. That transforms. That is able to renew their mind. Their thinking changes. All this starts to change in the way you think. I'm wiping my sweat. I'll do that. And, and, and all this changes. And when it changes, you make better decisions. Your actions are different. Your behavior is different. Your conduct is different. Everything starts to change. I'm not who I I'm not who I want to be yet. But thank God I'm not what I was. Hallelujah. 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 But I'm staying the course in Jesus' name. Number two, change your lifestyle. Change your lifestyle. Being and living born again. Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And it's funny that the less we read or hear, because some people say, well, Eddie, I don't like to read. Okay, hear the word then. If you don't like to read, hear the word. Something's got to get in you, because the less you do that, the less desire you're going to have for it. And that's the only thing that's really going to change you. Just like prayer. The less you pray... Yes, you want to pray. But when you wake up in the morning like my wife and I do, even before we brush our teeth, we're there lying down, we hold hands, we say, I love you, a little pet kiss, and we start praying. One day she's praying, one day I'm praying, and we pray every single morning. Rain, set. we don't rush out the door. Well, you're running late. No, uh, 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 we got to pray. Because me leaving out that door uncovered, I don't know what, what's capable of happening. The, the enemy of our souls wants to attack this because we're making an impact to the kingdom of God. We're just not married. We, we're just not just married. You know, like, uh, like a lot of people are just married. We're married with a kingdom purpose. We're married with a kingdom agenda. We're married with a kingdom uh, that we're going to make an impact and an inspiration to the, to the kingdom of darkness. That we're going to bring the lost. That we're going to help people rise up from their vomit. We're going to help people rise up from their dead souls. We're going to have people rise up from their issues of disease and sickness. We're going to help people rise up to have a, a deeper relationship with Jesus Christ. We're going to have, help people rise up from their dead souls that have been contaminated. From their souls that have been like injected with Novocaine. That they can't feel nothing. The Holy Spirit is not in them anymore. Or it may be in them here and there. But there's no conviction conviction in their life and so we're here to go against the kingdom of darkness and so when that happens the enemy of our soul comes strong so we got to be prayed up if we're not prayed up anything can happen john chapter 3 john chapter 3 because you know what's happening when i'm when i'm when i'm realizing these days i'm realizing that lord help me I'm realizing that a lot of people, those watching online, maybe here, just people that I come in contact with, a lot of people, hear me closely. I don't want to offend nobody, but a lot of people are saved, but they haven't repented. They're saved. I receive you, Jesus. But where's the change? Where's the transformation? Did you really have an encounter with God? Have you really, 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 really repented? Or are you just living to please your flesh? Uh, see, it's, it, it is or is not. And many of us are not all in. Like I was for many, many years. I wasn't all in. I was like one foot in, one foot out. I loved to please my flesh. And whoever says, oh, I, I don't like sin, you're a liar. You're a liar. The flesh loves sin. But the thing about it is, okay, I got this sin over here that I'm dealing with, and then the Spirit of God is calling my name to come over here. So I got this tug of war going in my mind. And so I got to, you can't get over here unless your mind is renewed. 
Because if you're doing it in your own strength, you're not going to make it. But if your mind is renewed, you can go over here. And so a lot of us are in this tug of war back and forth. And we don't know how to surrender. We don't know how to give our whole life to God. We're trying to live life our way, the natural way, what society says, what TV says, what people say, what your friends think. Who cares what your friends think? It's what he says. And so you're going to be, you're not meant to fit in with the world. You're not meant to be, oh, well, let me just not say anything because I want to keep them as a friend. Listen. You want to have the word of God in you in such a way that, but when it's in you, I hate to tell you, when it's really in you with a renewed mind, you're not going to fit in with the world. You're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be looked at sideways. You're going to be complained about. You're going to be possibly criticized. Whatever. The thing is that that's part. You're not meant to fit in. You're meant to stand out. Who told you that you were meant to fit in? In fact, Romans 12, when I was reading it earlier, it says, do not conform to the world. If you're conforming, then you're trying to fit in. We're not meant to fit in. We're meant to stand out. Which one are you going to be? Where are you going to be? And so in Roman, and, and on John chapter 3, I'm going to read real quickly, verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Nicodemus, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What is born again? Transformation. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is, is spirit. You see, whenever you sow, whenever you invest Whenever you make decisions on your flesh, the consequences is frustration, is distance from God, is the Holy Spirit not in you, the favor and blessings of God delayed, your prayers hindered. But when you're in the Spirit, according to the Word, it says you come spiritually, you're alive. And so I doubt that many people have repented. They may be saved, but God understands the heart. Because if you reject the word or the preacher of the word, then you're basically rejecting God. You're really rejecting God, not me. You're rejecting God. I'm just a messenger. I'm just a tool. I'm just a vessel. I'm just an instrument. The word is the word. And so it continues to read that. And that's, that was my fight for many years. Well, God, I got this over here. I'm a young buck. I think I have to have sex before marriage. And so, but I, the Bible is telling me, come over here. The Spirit is tell, calling me over here. God, what a battle that I had in my youth. And that decision that I made cost me a lot of headaches and a lot of money, child support. And so, the thing about it is, you, the devil paints this picture. You're going to miss out. You're going to miss out. But little does he know that God has an escape plan for you and a blessing waiting for you. But if you hear the wrong voice, if you hear the wrong voices, you're like my voice, what was telling me is, you're going to miss out. I'm like, I'm like oh, man, I want to do this, but I'm going to miss out. But little did I, the, 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 when I came to my understanding and when I came to my reasoning, I realized that I wasn't missing out at all. I was digging myself a hole deeper and deeper and deeper. And then to get out was more challenging than, what, than if I would have just stayed in the path of least resistance. But it, it continues to read, number seven, do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The winds blow where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot ter- tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born in the Spirit. So when you're born in the spirit, when you're born again, you come to this eternal, satisfactory feeling in your soul. You're not taking a gamble with like a roll of dice and to see if salvation or eternal life is yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, because 
if you listen to too many people, if you listen to TV, if you listen to your, your friends and your coworkers and even family sometimes, if you listen to whoever, if they're not aligned with the word, you're going to sometimes miss out on what God has for you. And a lot of times, those of you that come from, from generations of generations from other wickedness living and whatnot, and you have generational curses in your family, you come into the now into the light into the light of, of Jesus Christ, and all of a sudden your family are going to tell you they have brainwashed you. You have lost it. You have to continue getting into the Word, getting your mind renewed. Look at what Ephesians five fifteen says. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. I read on again, First Peter four. Therefore, since Christ suffered, say suffer. Since Christ suffered, I'm glad he didn't follow his feelings. I'm glad Christ didn't follow what people were saying. I'm glad he didn't listen to Peter. Oh, don't do that, master. Don't go to the cross, master. Imagine where would have been our salvation. There would be no salvation. There would be no baptism. There would be no transformation. Nothing. But thank God he didn't follow his feelings. Thank God. First Peter says he suffered for us in the flesh we got to suffer. Arm yourselves also. But you see, the suffering is only temporary. We think that this suffering is going to be, oh, I'm going to live a Calvary for the rest of my life. I'll be 90 years old. I'll still be in this Calvary. No. God will come to your rescue. Amen. Remember, what, remember the story I said last week about the gentleman that was, that was married for 60 years, six kids, 18, grand, 18 grandkids, um, six kids, 18 grandkids, 84 years old, still preaching. What a blessing. This guy had a full set of teeth. He was like strong like an ox. And my wife and I were talking to him. And I told you a story, but let me say it again. But because this inspired me so much that it, it, every marriage is going to have something. And I'm going to talk about this on Saturday's seminar. But I remember that I asked him, give me three words that describe your marriage, that are the anchor to your marriage, on why your marriage is so successful. Uh, uh, give me three words. I was, gonna, I was expecting commitment. I was expecting respect, love, good sex. I was expecting friendship. None of that. His three words were, trust God, trust God, trust God. The ocean comes with calm waves and raging storms. You got to deal with both sometimes. Sometimes the finances are not going to be there, so there's raging war. Sometimes there's misunderstanding. Uh, you got to trust God, trust God, trust God, for those of you who are getting married. So, amen. Now, um, number three. Number three in how to keep a spiritual mind. Five more. Are you guys uh, being helped by this? Yes. You, you sure? Yes. Okay, number three. I wanted to read one more before that. Ephesians 4.22. Put off. Your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful, to the deceitful lust, and be renewed by the spirit of your mind. Amen. Number three, fill your mind with God's word, which will change your heart and your mind. Psalms 119 and 105, it says, your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Amen. Amen. Psychology is for the mind, but the Bible is for your heart. Psychology is for the mind, but this is for the heart. And a lot of times we, we do what we do because we have a heart issue. Many of us have the word in our head, like I said, but not in our hearts. And so the Bible, by reading it, is not going to give you that transformation, that renewing of the mind. By doing it is actually going to do that. You don't need to go to horoscope. You don't need to get your palms read. You don't need to go to a psychic reader. You don't need to see, oh, well, let me see what my sign says today. You don't need none of that. This is the final authority. Over popular opinion and over comments of people. Number four, two more, we're done. Expect God to communicate and for you to feel him close. In other words, as you go to church and whatnot. This is part of renewing your mind. We got to go to church. If you're not reading the word, then go to church to hear the word. In James 1.5, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, but we got to ask, and without reproach, and it will be given to him. 
Forgive those that hurt you. That's your responsibility. Holding resentment is not your responsibility. So in the, in the past, I had issues with forgiving people. I felt like, well, you know, I don't really want to forgive them. So why should I forgive them if I don't feel like it? There's, there's that feel word again. Or that think word. You, you hear people, well, I feel like this. Oh, I think this. Who cares what you feel? Who cares what you think? It's what he says. And, and those two words, feel and think, are really irrelevant. Or the other, let's use a third word. Feel, think, and opinion. Well, it's my opinion. Who cares? What does he say? Well, this is how I feel. Who cares? What does he say? Well, this is what I think. Who cares? What does he say? Are you, are you a picky Christian? Are you a picky Christian? Pick and choose. Well, eso no me conviene. Esto sí, esto no, esto sí. No. When I've gone to dinner or lunch with Jennifer, uh, my God, the, the same meal all the time, and if she gets something that she doesn't want, to, 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 to the corner, to the corner. She's a picky eater. But that's how some people are. It, it, there's picky eaters, and then there's people that eat everything. Like my mom, who taught me how to eat lima beans, liver, when I was a kid. I don't know how my brothers got away with it, but uh, it's always the firstborn that suffers. I had to eat liver, and, and I could come with that, so it's a bueno about eat. And, 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 you know, cod liver oil and all that. I'm like, hey, how come you're not giving my brothers that? Uh, I had to eat liver. Why didn't they li eat liver? liver? But the, 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 the old one always gets the, 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 the worst, always gets the worst. But um, I forgive you, Mom. I forgive you. <laughs> I forgive you. But because of that, because of her mindset, I eat everything right now. I eat everything. I eat everything, and I'm never sick. I eat everything. Cod liver oil. Everything. I eat everything. And so, you know, I, I, I thank God that she treated me like this, that I don't have to just eat, you know, like, well, I just got to eat burgers, or I got to do this, I got to do that. No, no. I eat everything. Everything. When I'm hungry, I eat anything. Uh, liver is like bottom in my, in, in, my, in my wish list, but I eat liver too. And lastly, to finish it off, I'm glad you guys are having some fun. Number five, and how to have a renewed mind and how to get your mind renewed. Allow yourself to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Doing things on your own. Doing things on your own strength is not going to help you. I've tried doing things on my own strength, saying no to sin, with what with, with was my struggle, because we're all born with a bent, every one of us, some type of bent, because we're all born into sin, all born into sin. But God doesn't want you to stay like that. He wants you to transform by the renewing of your mind, according to Romans 12. I had to transform. I had to change. I, I question God sometimes. Well, God, you know, okay, I'm going in three years, and where, where's the wife? You know, and, and some people questioning me. Hey, are you okay, bro? Oh, come on, man. You know, you're, you're already a grown man. Let's, you know. But I wanted to do, not just hear the word of God. John 14, 26, as I wrap it up. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, this is who you need to conquer whom the Father will send in my name, Hallelujah. he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said. Hallelujah. With all heads bowed and eyes closed. I want to get a little serious with you today. This is between you and God. I'd like to take a brief moment to say that if this ministry has inspired you in any way, shape, or form, I'd like to ask you to consider and pray about sowing a donation or an offering towards it. The money used will be to improve our broadcasts that are being brought to you, to impact the kingdom of God further, and to help those that are walking in bondage and captivity be rescued, renewed, and restored. Another way you could cooperate to the ministry is by purchasing my book, Blessed, Balanced, and Complete, which will encourage you to rise higher in your Christian faith. Simply visit the link provided there on your screen for more information.